Hi everybody, Eugene here with Darkroom Software. In this quick video, we're going to learn how to upload to a private gallery on Event Gallery using Darkroom Booth. And when I say a private gallery, what we're talking about is a gallery that just has the images of a group of people, not the whole event. So if my family goes and uses a photo booth, the only images that I would see on my gallery would be the images of my family, not everybody from the event. So there are a couple moving parts um, that we are required for, to move information from one place to another to another. Um, but there is a sample template that will go along with this video to help you get started. So let's go ahead and jump right into my computer and see how this is all set up. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is set our master settings in event gallery. This is a brand new option that was added just recently. If we go to account and then go to settings, we'll see this tab right here, master settings. And this is going to apply settings to every new catalog, whether it's created by a darkroom booth, core, or um, your web browser. So one thing you'll notice is that I have it not to set not to display the images on the home page. I also have breadcrumbs turned off um, and I uh, want to make sure access gallery by URL is enabled. There are a couple other things I have changed. Uh, I don't have it showing the gallery date or name and that's specifically because we're going to use a code which is really going to be a phone number to create the gallery and they don't need to see their phone number um, so that's all hidden now I have to uh, I'll try to have a screenshot of all the settings that I'm using here so that you can apply them to your booth if you'd like to okay so once we have our master settings uh, we're gonna go ahead and click Save and then we are going to go to darkroom booth um, so I'm going to imagine that we're going to use a sample template just so you can see that how this is all set up and then I'll go through and show you how it all works. So if you go to darkroomsupport.com and then you can do a search for um, uh, private galleries and then just the final one that says creating private galleries using darkroom booth. There is a link right here to download this sample template. We'll go ahead and click it and pretend like I've installed it into my, uh, added it to my X drive. It's already there. Under my screens menu, I'm going to select that template and click load event settings and load to a brand new event. And I've already done that. Okay. So let's go ahead and run through a session real quick, just so you can see how it works first. And then we'll go into intricacies of the, this setup. So I have it set to auto detect uh, face and start the session automatically. And then it'll prompt using the survey to add a phone number. And we'll just go ahead and uh, type in a fake phone number. Now I'm going to click enter. It's going to go through capture three images, upload a strip and the three originals to event gallery. So as I said, uh, this is using the survey. That's how it's capturing what's going to become the uh, gallery name. And we're just using something that's unique and typically a phone number is uh, pretty easy. If we said type in a uh, unique number, people would kind of get a little bit uh, hung up on the, that. But um, we're asking for the phone number, it's not sharing via uh, SMS though. So I'm scanning with a QR code. I'll go ahead and click done. You can see that the images are already available um, just by scanning with a QR code. And in this case, there's also a QR code that's printed out on the strip. So they, if they forget to scan it with their phone, it would be on the strip and they can scan that as well. And it'll take them to their own private gallery. And those images are specifically for them. Let's switch back into event gallery so we can see what's going on there. <clears throat> so you can see a new gallery was just uploaded 555 
one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Um, that becomes the gallery name. If I switch to my client site, it's not available here. So the only way to get to that gallery is to scan that QR code or if I remember the name, let me see if I can remember. One, two, one, two, three. I believe that will take me to that page. As you can see, everything's pretty bare here. Anything, uh, most of the stuff has been stripped off because this is what they're going to be able to see once they get to uh, on their get to it on their phone. So I, I have just minimal branding. I don't have any click back to the home page. Um, some copyright information and just ways for them to share from. From this page, uh, from these images or this page, so that's their own private gallery. It's brand uh, brand new. Next person goes in, they're going to type in their phone number, and then their gallery will be based on their their phone number, and will be available in the admin side, but you won't be able to see it on the client site because it is hidden from that uh, the home page. Okay, so switching back now that we see how it works from their end from our end how do we set this up um, the first thing is going to be the survey well actually let's let's take one step before the survey pops up under controls I have it set to as soon as it recognizes a face to start the session and ask for a survey they're not touching the screen to start it just goes straight into a session as soon as it recognizes somebody. So as a face comes into the live view, it starts the session, which automatically switches into a survey. And the survey I'm using is right here. We'll click edit to see what's happening here. I just have it set to ask for a phone number. Um, and then um, it's changing a field or updating a field called gallery code. And this isn't specific to this whole workflow. It just has to be a unique name that you can uh, take from here, add it to the print, and then it turns into the catalog name. So I just have it set for gallery code. And more than likely that really should be required. The survey response should be required because otherwise it'll just print out. But um, so the next thing before we get into the uh, post to event gallery settings, you have to add that same code to the print. Otherwise it won't transfer to the event gallery. So if you look right back here, hidden behind everything, I have a little bit of text that is taking that code from the survey and adding it to the print template. And it's kind of hard to see, uh, one, because it's gray on gray, uh, but, and then I also add it to the back because that's not important. It doesn't need to be seen. It just has to be in the template to be available for the next step. So cancel here. It captures the images after taking the survey and then it's gonna upload and post to event gallery. And once again, here we are uh, we have that smart text uh, gallery code and I have the name checked and also uh, the date checked and then also uploading the originals now that has to be in those three areas it, it uh, doesn't matter if it's on the print or the screen template or not but I'm gonna go over that one more time and I'm gonna uh, point out something really specific if you look at the survey it does not have uh, percent signs surrounding gallery code it just says gallery code when you go to the print it will have the percent signs um, so you can see it right here percent gallery code percent and then the same thing because that then becomes smart text um, becomes a variable that uh, Darkroom's using. So on the survey, don't add the percent signs. On the output template and also post to event gallery, it needs to have the percent signs. 
And that's how it moves from somebody entering in a survey, using the print template to hold on to it, and then the post to event gallery then grabs it from the print template. It won't go straight from the survey to post to event gallery. In the future, you might see uh, newer features to make this a little bit simpler. Uh, but as for right now, this is a great way to post to a private gallery for each session. A couple things that we'll wanna uh, you want to think about whenever you start making changes. First thing I would recommend is use the sample template with the event settings. Um, it's an easy way to get started. And then if you mess it up, you can reload the settings um, until you're comfortable with the setup. The next thing is if you change the output template, make sure you add that percent gallery code percent to your output template because that's what's holding on to that code. So it has to be in there. Um, and then finally with uh, the addition of just something small like the master settings and event gallery we can now kind of rethink the way we've been working i didn't have to use email or sms i typed in a phone number only to create the gallery name um, but nothing's actually transferred through either of those it is uploading and that's why it's really helpful to add the qr code to the print template so just in case you have any internet issues it'll still print out that code and when the images do upload uh, they can scan the code and the, their images will still be available even though you might have had some internet issues at the event or not had Wi-Fi you can disable Wi-Fi and then it'll queue up and send later so that is creating private galleries in event gallery using darkroom booth I know there's a lot of moving parts hope everybody was able to follow along I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.